You don't need more than nine tiles in City Skylines. Just when I felt like I proved this already by using every single DLC and content creator pack within the vanilla nine tiles, I had comments like this telling me it's nigh impossible to get them all to five stars in that same space without mods. So naturally, I took that challenge. And for every DLC I don't max out the star rating of, I will trade a shiny Pokemon randomly via Wonder Trade in Pokemon Scarlet, just to put some good into the world, you know? I chose the Marble Canyon map from the industry's DLC because I knew I'd need all four resources available and let's be honest, its building area was nice. And the terrain would prove to be a challenge. There was a large river through the building area which also made the land pretty uneven, but surely I was up for this, right? We've all seen the beginnings of a new build in City Skyline a million times, so I've sped this up for you. I reached Little Hamlet, Worthy Village, and Tiny Town Milestones without a hitch. I had this challenge in the bag. In these early stages of building, I was focused as ever on making the city look appealing because, you know, my pride. Place your bets on how long that lasts. I used the usual min-maxing of budgets and kept taxes high to politely convince my citizens to hand over pretty much all their worth. But I made sure to give a little back, keeping the garbage, medical, fire, and police budgets at 101% allowed one more vehicle each to spawn with just a fractional cost increase. I could at least pretend to be a benevolent mayor during this challenge, even if I did really just want to exploit all these little computer programs to throw golden stars at my screen. By this point, I was close to getting my first of those dopamine fueling stars, but before that happens, let's run through just how many ratings are possible in this game so we can get the full scope of this challenge. The Industries DLC has four types of industry, farming, forestry, ore, and oil, and each one can reach five stars. The Park Life DLC is also split into four, City Park, Amusement Park, Zoo, and Nature Reserve. Each one can reach five stars. The Campus DLC is where things get tricky. There are three types of campus, trade school, liberal arts, college, and university, and each one can reach five stars. But where the industries and park life areas stay at five stars forever once they've reached them, all these campuses need to meet and maintain certain stats to hold their five star status. So if I want to have all rating stars maxed out at once, this will be a doozy. There's also a smaller concerts DLC and the festival area can be leveled up to three stars. The airports from the aptly named airports DLC can also reach three stars. And just for fun, I'll make sure to level up the stock exchange from the financial districts DLC to its max level, even though I won't get shiny gold stars from it. So if I divide by four, carry the one, check the hypotenuse, that's a total of 61 stars and a bunch of money made through the stock market to call this challenge a success. I guess we better get to it. So you know we've got a lot of work ahead of us and we unlocked the parks DLC a couple milestones ago, so let's put that to use. I have grand plans for this city. I'm just going to use the dirt road to get down here to help save us some cash and get into this park life menu. Quisty Bridges here is going to be our first park and you will see why I've chosen that name. But for now, we will get the main gate put in. Let's just get some basic paths put in here with the starter items put down because we just want to get our entertainment value up in order to start leveling up. Hey, Hey, I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. Quisty Bridges here, it's had enough visitors to level up, but it needs just one more entertainment and I don't feel like putting down an entire another building just to get one more entertainment. So I'm gonna take this little bench right here out of these props right here that are back here and I'm gonna put it right there. And ta-da, we've reached level two. We are making progress in our challenge. But if we want some real progress, we are going to need some more space. So I'm coming out here, I'm buying this tile. I'm buying this tile. And we are expanding. You can see I have a couple industries in here. We have forestry, we have ores, we have our park that has reached level five. Check one off the list, Editor Toadie. And coming down here, we are going to get started on our first major hurdle, which is going to be Horse Trades University. We have a one star university. While we're in the area, we might as well get started on a festival area. Placing this down, you will notice that it can get upgraded to three stars, but will it ever get there? This side of the water had two industries, a university and a festival area to support. So I spent some time getting it filled out 
I had access to high density zoning by this point, so sayonara to any thoughts of low density houses. My cute little computer programs were from here on out destined to live cramped into tight spaces like cyber sardines. As our industries to the west were growing and leveling up, they were creating a catastrophic amount of traffic and this led me to understand something that would become a challenge within this challenge. In order to fully populate three universities at once, I needed an unordinarily high population for the city, which could only mean one thing, traffic. I needed to get a grip on traffic now in this still kind of sort of early stage before it grew out of control and into an untamable Lovecraftian monster reaching out for me with its grimy claws wanting to show me the deepest depths of its despair. I decided to take an early drastic measure. I decided to care a little less about what this city looked like and so I built this. It was time to move back to the other side of the river and expand, making room for our second university. Of course, this meant taking another connection off the highway and populating the area around it, feeding these brainless citizen programs their recommended dose of services and parks. Then, just as I was scooching over to start our farming industry, I began to feel a slight twinge. I think, I think I was just a few minutes into the challenge and already feeling a bit of, dare I say it, monotony? I knew I had a point to prove though, I couldn't let the doubters win. So I shook things up by getting some metro placed throughout the city which doubled as an effective way to help the aforementioned oncoming traffic problems and settled back into my resolve. I knew there were a few stars I could hammer out pretty easily but first I had to do some of that one thing that brings this little corner of the internet together, city building. After placing the stock exchange, I thought to myself, what pairs better with city building than some good old fashioned insider trading? A measly million and a half monies earned later and our stock exchange was its full level five. Bonus challenge complete. Just behind it was the festival area and it was ready to level up as well, bringing it to its full three stars. This was some serious progress. I was feeling good. Next, I spent some time developing our last industry to five stars. Train oil was complete, which meant all the industries were complete. That was a full 20 stars for our list. Gang, we were closing in on success. I bought the final ninth tile and zoned for Warner Airport. It only took time, patience, and the willingness to shun away my pride to get this ugly thing to its full three stars. With all this prospering, what could possibly go wrong? I was on a streak of success. The only DLCs keeping me from being the champion of this challenge were park life and campus. I had all four parks built, I just had to wait for visitors. But I knew campus was going to be the struggle. So I began what I knew would be pure drudgery. I did my best to balance each campus's beauty needs with student availability. I spaced out the campus buildings within their areas so that nearby students could get to their studies easily. I built up more metro for the kids that lived further away. I tried to entice the dinky little computer programs to move in with parks and services really just all the usual city skylines, city building stuff. And then I built more and I placed more services and parks and I let more people move in and I waited for demand to grow and built more and placed more services and parks and let more people move in and waited for demand to grow and well, you get it. Leave a thumbs up Berg's population grew from just under 80,000 computer folks to over 130,000 computer folks. 
Surely we had enough population for all three campuses now. Let's take a look at the campuses statuses now. And after just a bit more development and waiting, we had done it. All three campuses were at five stars simultaneously and I felt like I was on the top of the world. Take that, doubters. You can officially never complain about nine tiles again. I win. But wait, I forgot about the parks from Park Life DLC. But surely after all this time, they've had enough people go through them to level up alongside everything else? Upon checking, it seemed that only Quisty Reserve here had yet to reach its full five stars. Cool. It's as easy as just leaving it to run, right? I gave it the advertisement campaign perk and let the game do its thing. But then it got weird. Check out the date bottom left at the end of this clip well into November of 2061. After this clip was recorded, I shut the game down while I went on a brief maniacal spree of dog-earing pages and books, and when I opened it again, well, this happened. And honestly, I think it had happened earlier in the save too, but I let it lie to me. I had let a computer game from 2015 that in theory I had mastered after 2,500 hours gaslight me into thinking that I just needed to wait and build and wait. I was ashamed. I needed to take stock. Leave a thumbs up Berg had a five star forestry industry, five star ore industry, five star farming industry, and five star oil industry. It had all three campuses at five stars simultaneously across the map. The airport was three stars. The festival area was three stars. Even the stock exchange was fully expanded. The city park had reached five stars. So had the amusement park and the zoo. But this nature reserve, well, it had tanked my reserves. I wasn't enjoying this anymore, and well, gang, video games are just that. Games. If you're not having fun with them, then what are you doing? I had 60 out of 61 possible stars, all within nine tiles, and knew in my heart of hearts that time would grant me that last star, but that was time I could spend chit-chatting with you in my Discord instead. So I booted up my Switch. I took this failure as an opportunity to make some Pokemon Trainers Day, and off I sent a little dirt here to a new home. I also realized folks may argue I should have built a cargo airport and brought it to three stars as well. Well, so goodbye, Leanne. May you bring joy to your new owner. And you know what? I'm all about acknowledging the good things and sending kindness into the world. So Jay here was yeeted into the ether to its new owner. Would it evolve into a shiny three-segmented Dundun Sparse? I would never know, but I could hope. And I guess that's my message today. Play video games however you enjoy them. And remember, rebellions are built on hope. YouTube thinks you should watch the video on screen next. And I think you should subscribe for more obtuse life lessons through video game challenges. Be kind.